Well, as South Africa marks the start of the new academic school calendar, we explore the implications of uh, the rise of uh, artificial intelligence in terms of preparing learners for the demands of uh, this new era of emerging technology. Last year uh, was a breakthrough year for the technology with uh, an explosive growth of AI technologies redefining uh, the workplace impacting present and uh, future in demand uh, skills. Although self driving cars, uh, robo, robo investment uh, advisors, and other artificial intelligent technologies are currently not a mainstream, the upcoming generation will experience these entities as if uh, they have always existed. Uh, for them, artificial intelligence will uh, transcend its uh, conventional role as a tool, becoming not only an integral part of their lives, but also a constant co worker. Learners who aren't sufficiently equipped uh, to join this new AI technology world economy are uh, poised to experience increasing limitations in participating in this new world. This, in turn, has serious socioeconomic mobility consequences, further continuing disparities among segments of the population. All right, well, this then begs the question, are we adequately preparing our next generation of learners to effectively participate in the AI economy. To discuss this uh, question and more, uh, we are now joined by Ari Katz uh, from Boston Online Home Education. A very good evening to you, sir. Thank you so very much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. Good evening. All right, would you agree that uh, it was uh, AI's uh, breakout year last year? I think many of us uh, sort of started to know um, of AI uh, technology last year. And, and also just in terms of the impact on, on new skills uh, for learners and, and learning, what does it all mean? So I think without a doubt, AI is uh, a significant part of our lives. And there, there are two aspects from an education point of view. Number one, how do we harness the, this, this AI resource to be able to uh, improve our education and our education system on the one hand and on the other hand what are the skills that we need to be giving our learners so that they are better equipped to enter the world of AI. Yeah. So maybe if we look at the both those problems the first one is in terms of how do we use AI and why would we want to use AI in the classroom environment and of course there are many advantages such as just name some of them for example personalized learning we can use data-driven technology to find out what a learner knows and what he doesn't know so for example i can get down to the detail of knowing that this learner can add and subtract fractions but they might not be able to divide and multiply now the minute i've got that kind of data yeah. i know that i can number one I know exactly what problem to solve for and how to address it. And at number two, I'm able to um, focus on that and create personalized learning in terms of assessments. I can use adaptive learning where we start at uh, easier examples and then move up the food chain yeah. to get to more difficult examples. And so without a doubt, the ability to harness the AI and to harness the technology is certainly going to improve the learner experience and ultimately our results that we get out of the learners. And, That's and from an educational point yeah. of view. I mean, you've, you've kind of touched on where I wanted to go with this. I mean, you know, in South Africa already, we're having issues with where we're hearing that, you know, uh, learners aren't, you know, reading with or for uh, understanding um, and are not at the level that, you know, at the same, where their age is, they're not at the same level in terms of uh, reading. And one would then ask, you know, if we're battling with something that one could say is so basic, you know, are we ready and prepared? Uh, is the current SA educational space, you know, resourced or have space really uh, for those sort of uh, demands that can bring in, um, you know, AI uh, technology and, 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 and learning? So you're touching on different things there. So first up, you spoke about the uh, the report that was, or the research that was done, which showed that 80% of learners in grade four are not able to read for meaning. Mm. And clearly that's a, a massive problem. I know that uh, the president initially promised that by 2030, 80% of learners would be able to read for meaning, and clearly that's not going to be achieved. Yeah. But of course, you have to be able to read for meaning before we even start. So that's not even an AI discussion. That's a, just a discussion generally in improving uh, our reading and not only our reading but our reading for meaning and they're different so that's number one but the other issue it relates to on that 
is that when we talk about meaning, which also relates in a sense to AI, is that we now have to change the methodology in which we, we're teaching. So instead of talking about rote learning, where we spoke, speak about the facts, what we're really talking about now is understanding the why. So when we teach reading for meaning, it's about not only reading the paragraph, but actually understanding the paragraph and then challenging it asking the learner, well, why do you think this and this happened? What are the other alternatives? Um, what would have happened if, so in that way, you, you stimulate creativity yeah. and you, you generate what we call higher order thinking and cognitive, you know, we develop cognitive thinking. And that is really where the focus needs to change. Whereas historically, we focused very much on rote learning. Now we need to focus on interpretation, understanding, um, and more higher order thinking. And I think that needs to be embraced far more significantly, yeah. uh, particularly with the resources that we have available through online. Yeah. And it seems that, you know, AI technology is the future, whether, you know, we, we like it or not. And, 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 you know, learners must get onto it, um, you know, either way. How would we be able to accelerate um, AI literacy in, 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 in schools in, in, in general, um, especially at the point that we, we are now uh, in terms of our education system? So I think instead of saying that we're going to have to learn to live with it, I think we should the approach should be different. We should yeah. be saying, we've got this technology, how do we embrace it for the better? And in that again goes back to the change in the way we think about education and the pedagogy. So as I said before, some of the steps would be, number one, focus on the why, not on the what. So historically, we focused on the what, which are the facts. But now we should be focusing on the why. Why did we do that? What are the alternatives, etc.? That's number one. Number two, focus on the process versus the product. So when we talk about the process, we talk about how did you solve that problem? What were the steps? What are the other ways you could have solved this problem? What are the alternatives? What were the challenges? So we stimulate thinking as a, of alternatives as opposed to, as I said before, regurgitation and focus on the facts. Yeah. So it's a very different mindset from what we traditionally have spoken about in education. I mean, I would imagine that the next step on that would be to emphasize problem solving. What are the steps in problem solving? What are the alternatives? And keep challenging it. It's all really about the challenging. And then, of course, there's the issue which was mentioned uh, many times in AI, which the next thing would be ethics. Okay, what are the ethics around the way you solve this? What are the ethics around the data that I'm using um, and the implications of that? So we need to teach our learners also the ethics around um, AI and the use of AI. Yeah. And then, of course, it's really also about um, better learning resources and learning in better ways. But interestingly enough, the, 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 you spoke about earlier about the World Bank, and they published a list of the top 10 skills in, to be, in the future generation of AI. And top of that list, funny enough, were the human skills, things like collaboration, relationships, etc. Because even though we might have machines, we might have AI, we are still human beings, yeah. and we're still going to function in the world of human beings. And so that's a significant component of the new world of AI to learn to not to forget about the human relations yeah. and collaboration, etc. So would you say it's not a legitimate fear, really, that, you know, some people have that, you know, uh, these sort of technologies, whether it's AI or robots, whatever it is, will ultimately replace uh, human beings and will replace, you know, the, the jobs. Uh, you know, recently a, a friend was concerned that she was being served at a restaurant by a robot. Um, you know, so, so is, <laughs> you know, is this like a legitimate, uh, legitimate fear? So I've got the exact opposite view of that. I don't believe that robots are coming for our jobs. And if you look at history over time, you will see that as we advance with technology, the uh, unemployment rates dropped as the as in technology was enhanced. What will change is the, the, the types of skills that we need. And that's why it's even more important in the future world, the knowledge-based economy, to, to enhance um, our, our, our adaptability and our flexibility and to embrace these new technologies. Mm. But if you look at it everywhere in the global economy where they've embraced technology, unemployment has dropped significantly. Yeah. All right. And so, yes, yeah. there will be a change of jobs, 
but certainly robots are not coming for our jobs. I think there's an opportunity to actually reduce unemployment by enhancing technology and, 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 and taking advantage of technology.